being aware of your abilities is important and for me and uh, also for Ariel we wanted to build the team so for us it was we work a lot. Welcome to the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast. I'm here today with Adrian Trott from the Cormenty Trott from Century 21. That's right. <laughs> How yeah. are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you for joining our podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your team, who you are, how long have you been a realtor? Uh, so our team originally started off as myself and my business partner, Ariel Cormendi. Okay. And uh, he and I had been working together for a long time. So we come from um, automotive backgrounds. So we were in car sales and various management positions in the automotive industry for about 10 years. Okay. Uh, working together for the better part of that, maybe seven years. And we just got sick of it. So about eight years ago, we transitioned into real estate, started our team. And uh, up until really end of, I'd say 2017, it was just the two of us. Um, so he and I were working together, um, just the two of us doing everything from the photos and video um, to all the marketing and the sales and hands-on um, selling homes and helping all of our clients. And then we got to a point where we decided we wanted to grow the team. Yeah. Uh, so we started off by adding a salesperson, then an administrative um, assistant. And from there, we've now ended up with five licensed agents, wow. a full-time videographer, <laughs> and uh, our full-time client care manager. So um, yeah, we're doing really well, keeping very busy. I'm sure. Yeah. And then what is the biggest differentiator for you between the sales car, car Sells, selling car and selling yeah. home. Yeah. Um, it was, a, I don't know, I found it was a very natural progression for us. Yeah. Um, you know, whether you're selling a car or selling a television or a house at all, it just comes down to marketing and sales and yeah. uh, dealing with consumers and, and various behaviors. And um, I felt like it was something that was extremely helpful for us getting into the industry. Yeah. Uh, just having a really good grasp on that. You know, being in car sales, we were dealing with multiple people on a daily basis. So we had a lot of time to hone our skills when it came to the sales aspect of things. Yeah. Um, and we took a lot, all those skills and just applied it into real estate. And it was just same thing, different people and slightly different product, obviously. But um, the concept is the same. The same. Yeah. What do you love the most about real estate? Um, it's a good question. So the reason we got into it, I speak for myself anyways, um, is shortly before we made the transition, I moved for okay. my first time. I sold my first house with the assistant of, assistance of a, a local realtor who was uh, reputable and mm -hmm. uh, you know, known in the area and signs everywhere. So I hired him and I just was really disappointed. Ah, I um, see. Especially with your background in sales, so you kind of knew. Yeah, like okay. you have a certain level of expectation and I, you know, I really appreciate somebody that goes the extra mile and um, it, it didn't happen for me in that sale. Uh, to the point, like their um, definition of staging was they told me to go buy stuff at Walmart and then <laughs> set it up myself. Uh, Keep so the my tags. yeah, my <laughs> wife and I went shopping at like eleven o'clock at night before the store closed. Brought it all home, set it up. Um, so that experience um, just made me realize that there was a huge opportunity. Yeah. Uh, if this reputable agent who was seemingly doing well um, was providing little to no service, then there was obviously a big hole that needed to be filled. Mm -hmm. And um, Ariel and I, I think he had a very similar experience. He did most of the negotiating uh, on his sale his rather than his actual realtor. <laughs> um, so it just immediately, I just kind of zoned in on it as a kind of have that, I had that entrepreneurial tendency and I wanted to get into business for myself uh, with Ariel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just kind of made sense. Yeah. So. And then, progression from being sell, uh, in sales, you guys went crazy with the marketing. Um, you have someone following you, which yeah. is interesting on video, yeah. but then where does this background in marketing come from? Um, so I, Ariel was heavily involved with it in the uh, uh, car dealership. So yes. he was involved with the marketing aspect there. 
Um, I went to school um, for one semester, <laughs> half of another semester, and then I dropped out. But I was in school for digital media. Okay. Um, so I, I had a, a knack for the you know graphics and video and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Um, but just kind of, I think it all falls into that whole entrepreneurial um, yeah. uh, kind of spirit and just having a desire to build a business and knowing what you need to do to get the, to build it up and yeah. get exposure. You did make a name for being tech savvy and out there in the media. So yeah. how, uh, like what made you do that? Like what, this, what made you spark that? That's what you need to do. Uh, so when we started, we were doing videos uh, for every listing, whether it was a $250,000 condo or a $2 million house, it didn't matter. Um, and at that time, it was unheard of, really. Um, yeah. Eight I don't years think, ago. Yeah, so nobody was really doing it. Uh, and those who were, it was very inconsistent. Um, whereas we wanted to just provide everybody with the same level of service. It didn't matter what you were selling. So in the beginning, I had a little point and shoot. I was just walking around with it, making videos. Uh, looking back, they're probably quite embarrassing. But <laughs> you know, nevertheless, at the time, it was something that wasn't being used was, elsewhere. So yeah. it was good um, as a comparison to other people. Um, but you know, just obviously seeing the way that the market was going in every industry, it was a necessity. Yeah. And those who weren't doing it were going to fall behind. So how did you see that increase your business? Um, you know, I think as, as with anything, you don't necessarily see the results of it immediately. Um, I think behind the scenes, people see things and then, you know, a year later, they're like, oh, remember that video we saw? That was really cool. We should call those guys. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is just uh, kind of indirect exposure to people that turns into business. Yeah. Um, we got to say that to all our clients, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a direct thing. No, you don't post no. a video on Facebook and get four listings. No, of course. But yeah. yeah. I think that's where most people fail with everything yeah. is they're not consistent enough and they, they want to reap the rewards too quick. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be persistent. Yeah, I totally and agree. Consistent. Consistency and doing it all the time. Because if you drop and change your mind or stop, then you lose opportunities. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. What's a typical day look like for you? Um, all over the place. I mean, we're um, you know growing the business now. Uh, yeah. Things are changing rapidly, so yeah. my responsibilities within the company are changing. Uh, still very involved from a sales aspect. Uh, so still working with buyers and sellers. Still doing listing presentations. Uh, but also uh, slowly transitioning to more um, kind of business building uh, activities um, with yeah. Ariel in terms of marketing and video and social media exposure, stuff like that. Yes. Um, and then, you know, working with our team to train them, implement new processes. More management. More management stuff, but also still networking and yeah. trying to build a name for us ourselves. Very cool. So, so. you have all the pieces. Working. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and always trying to stay ahead, yeah. right? Like you can never be content with what you're doing. Um, so, you know, the next step is, you know, what's the next big thing? Where's the market going? Uh, how can we get there first? And what services should we be providing? So. Yeah. What do you think was your biggest one thing that made you successful? I don't think there is any one thing. Okay, um, I like that. <laughs> I work my ass off. Yeah, I think that Hard work. <laughs> first and foremost. Um, you know, I think it takes a big dedication. I think there's a difference between, um, you know, there's sales, real estate agents that are salespeople. Yeah. And uh, then there's real estate agents who might have that more entrepreneurial kind of tendency where they want to build a bigger business. Mm -hmm. uh, both are fine, but um, I think being aware of your abilities is important. And for me and uh, also for Ariel, we wanted to build the team. So for us, it was we work a lot. Yeah. Uh, I have a very um, patient wife uh, who is... Uh, at home with kids all the time and uh, I'm not around a lot so evenings and weekends yeah after. evenings weekends all the time really mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it thoroughly I mean that's what drives me um, but you have to have uh, the drive and you have to yeah. enjoy it if you don't it just won't work out but um, it's a number of things that have made us successful, but the work ethic is a big component of it. Yeah, I like that work ethic. Yeah. What's uh, now that you have a bigger team? Do you have more time for yourself? And no, it's funny because every so um, before we grew our team, 
I found that we were both perfectionists. Mm -hmm. and we didn't like to delegate uh, to the point where in the very beginning uh, actually for a little quite a while we were doing our own photos doing our own video um, everything uh, and we you know quickly learned that you have to delegate to grow yes and uh, as soon as we would delegate something to another company or an individual we would see very quickly it, it does help you grow but the weird thing with it is you know, even though I'm no longer doing those tasks, I still don't have any free time. You don't. It's like you, you add on you, more stuff. <laughs> yeah, you, you delegate something and then all of a sudden you find opportunity uh, to do something else and continue growing. So I think at, you know, maybe at some point you take a step back a little yeah. bit, but I don't see that in any uh, anytime soon. No. So. Mm -hmm. oh, that's okay. Do you still love it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah thoroughly. Fine. If you're controlling a little bit, even though you're delegating more, I find it's going to be yourself that you're going to delegate not just abdicating letting go of things yeah. that are not going to help your business yeah your business can thrive yes that way yeah. very cool yeah. what is um the future looking like for you guys what's your goals or team just uh take it one day at a time we keep growing the business and seeing yeah. where it goes um you know, we don't have any definitive um goals necessarily in terms of where we see things we're just um always trying to stay ahead and mm -hmm. implement um, new services into our repertoire of services that we offer our clients. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Where it goes, yeah. yeah. If you were to speak with a brand new agent and had some advice to give this brand new agent, what would it be? Um, I think most agents fail because they give up too soon. Okay. Um, I guess an example would be one of the first things we did for networking was um, Ariel and I are actually next door neighbors. Okay. Uh, so we decided, well, you know, we live in a newer neighborhood. There's generally uh, a high rate of turnover in a new neighborhood. So we would focus there as our farm area. Yeah. So we started a local Facebook page. We um, started a local um, community website. We sent out a monthly newsletter. Actually, originally it was quarterly and then it transitioned to monthly. Um, and the newsletter was very expensive. We did a nice, with my digital, you know, media background, we created a really nice uh, newsletter, sent it out. I had yeah. actually like relevant information that Good. people were interested in. And it wasn't like a chest pounding rah rah look at me. Um, look at my words. <laughs> yeah, so we were actually just a very small section on the back. But yeah. um, with that, we didn't see results of it until maybe a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, and even that it was yeah. minor, but after about two years, okay. it really took off and we had a ton of business in our neighborhood. Okay. Um, so I think two things came from that. One is you have to uh, be cons consistent with it, even though you don't see the results. Yeah. Uh, but also you have to be everywhere. So like the website, the Facebook page, the newsletter. Uh, yeah. We held a local, uh, a short while after maybe three or four newsletters. We held an event, a charitable event in the in neighborhood. The neighborhood. Yeah, we blocked off a street. Yeah. We brought in a big bouncy castle, a barbecue, and all this stuff. Uh, so you have to be everywhere, but consistently. Yeah, yeah. So, so that helped. A hundred percent. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Yeah. And what do you do for fun when you have free time? Um, I uh, just started snowboarding again. Okay. So I haven't been in thirteen years, and I decided this year I want to start getting back into it. So I. Got some new snowboard gear and I've been doing that. Um, my wife and my four and a half year old are taking lessons also. Yeah, very so cool. So I'm hoping that uh, and they seem to be enjoying it. So uh, that's fun. And that's really it. I love that's movies. Really yeah. So sometimes I can squeeze a movie in late at night, but yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And then what? Uh, where do we find you if we're getting your information? Yeah, so we're very big on social. Uh, okay. Obviously, we have our website, which is Yes. Um, we're, our primary uh, social media pages are Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, and Snapchat. And it's all slash Cormendy Trot. Okay. Um, but yeah, pretty easy to... Podcast, all the stuff. Yeah, our podcast um, we're hosting on SoundCloud and it's streaming on iTunes, Google Play, yeah. um, uh, Spotify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool. And then we have the recorded part on YouTube also. Yeah, very so. cool. 
Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. So look out for their podcast, Cormandy Trot Team, and it was Adrian Trot with us today. <music>